What is up, everyone? Jose Youngs here with MMAFighting.com here for the normal Wednesday edition of the A-Side. I know since quarantine started, we've do- been doing this three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, but as per usual for the last, I don't know how many years, Wednesday, 1 p.m. It's 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific, we are here. Joining me this week, though, is, of course, Pizza Carroll, my normal co-host, and I am very excited to say... 205 Live WWE Superstar Gentleman Jack Gallagher is joining us, also undefeated MMA fighter. For those of you who don't know, I know some people were questioning, why do you have another WWE <laughs> restaurant? We had Biggie on uh, before SummerSlam, uh, and he mentioned that we should get Jack Gallagher on the show at some point. It took a little while, but he's here. Uh, so, Jack, how's life in during quarantine time? And as I did mention, undefeated MMA fighter, for those of you, for those of our fans who don't know, tell us a little about your MMA background. Um, to be fair to my un- undefeated record, it is an undefeated amateur record. I've never been undefeated, paid nonetheless, sir. <laughs> to uh, formally whoop someone's ass, as it were. Um, no, I've been uh, obviously interested in uh, MMA as a fan still, whilst being a WWE superstar. So thanks very much for having me on, chaps. But uh, yeah, I was pursuing amateur MMA and uh, looking at potentially moving to professional MMA as well, just as I was signed to WWE. So I've always kind of just kept my eye on it. And uh, apart from that, life in quarantine has been okay because I, I can lift weights, but I can't go grapple. I can't hit pads. Like I'm trying to convince my wife right now is a really good time for me to get to. I've got a fair gee. I could teach her the gee. She's not into it. She's not into it at all. <laughs> Well, you and we had Corey Sandhagen on a couple weeks ago, and he was under he was feeling the same thing where he was like having random sparring matches with his girlfriend. He was trying to have her <laughs> hold pads in the basement, and he's still cutting weight just in case Jose Aldo can't get to the states. And he's like, "Well, I might fight Henry Cejudo. My only sparring partner is going to be my girlfriend." So everyone's in that same boat right now. <laughs> But anyway, PT, how's life with you since we last? It's been, uh, we didn't see you Monday, we saw you Friday. How's life been with you? Yeah, just becoming more and more erratic as the days go on. Uh, getting more aggressive, uh, melting down a few <laughs> times a day. You know, about things that are completely fine about 30 minutes later, I'm just like, oh, better make a big scene out of this. Every, everyone's starting to not like living with me again, and that <laughs> makes me feel like I've done my job. I've held up my end of the bargain for this isolation. Well, before we get into the questions, I know Jack and Pizza were talking about it. Uh, Pizza, you were telling me Jack, his amateur, his, one of his amateur fights under a legitimate organization, right? Yeah, this ICFC, yeah, I was saying to Jack beforehand, it, it bled a lot of uh, the young pros, the young standout pros we have now on the scene in the UK and Ireland. So that makes me think that Jack is is underselling himself as an MMA talent here. And I believe uh, my good friend Acid Hayes on Twitter was telling me earlier that you trained with Billy Robinson, who was, who was trained with the likes of Sakuraba and uh, Shayna Baszler and people like this. Is this correct? Um, yeah, I started off, actually. I didn't start with jiu-jitsu, uh, although most people kind of know me in the gym as like the jiu-jitsu guy. Um, I started with catch wrestling in Wigan. Uh, sunny Wigan, very lovely place. Uh, and I trained with a guy called Roy Wood uh, out of the snake pit. He was the last person to be trained by Billy Riley. Kind of the thing is Billy Riley trained Billy Robinson. Billy Robinson uh, trained Sakuraba. So all the sort of generation of pride Japanese fighters wow. that a lot of people like is those guys. Um, actually, when I lived in I lived in Tokyo for about nine, ten months, I actually got to train with Megumi Fuji as well in wow. uh, the AACC. The, uh, yeah, AACC, that was pretty fun, actually, as well. So, a little bit traveled. I'm training with Seth Petrozelli now out of the jungle. Yeah. And um, wow. plugged to Felicia Spencer as well, who will be challenging for the title at some indeterminate point in the future. <laughs> <I'm sure. laughs> yes, yes. Uh, I'm sure our director Casey's all excited talking about catch rest. And before you jumped yeah. on, he was he was talking about his affinity for it, right, Casey? It's a, it's, a, it's a double wrist lock, not a Kimura. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, come on, guys. Yeah, everyone's got that old impression of the old Wigan man just to do it again, do the hold yeah. again. <laughs> yeah, the, my, uh, my my coach I train with, um, he's a protege of um, uh, uh, CS. Uh, I forgot his name right. Eric Paulson, a CSW. Eric Paulson. Yeah, so I, I, yeah, oh, awesome. I'm, all, I'm all like every day. Ugh. <laughs> you know, yeah, just like how 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 far can my jaw be crushed in? That's about. Oh yeah, just like oh, is it the jaw or the, or the neck today? Yeah. <laughs> Every good, choke, oh, they, every good choke starts with a starts with a, uh, a neck crank, you know, or crank. 
Yeah. Uh, were they they inspirations behind you getting into MMA, Jack? Like when you were going there, like when was a what was what kind of got you into catch wrestling? Was that was that to always move on to pro wrestling, or or did you did you kind of see that in MMA before you you started training? So it's really weird. I got into professional wrestling first, and I was a little bit uh, apprehensive of MMA because I thought the um, the fan base, would you believe, might be a bit toxic. Um, Shock. Well, right. Rocking. Who Never. would have ever? Who would have ever thought? Right. So <laughs> I, I was a little. I was a little bit resigned to it at first because I was like, ah, you know, like whatever, you know, it's, it's just the blood and guts thing. But it actually was kind of the Kazushi Sakuraba. And it was the, you know, you've got to find your way in. You've got to find the thing that you connect to. Mm. So for me, it was, ah, here is a guy who associates himself as a pro wrestler who is doing pro wrestling moves like the sliding drop kick and the tiger mask spinning back kick and all this crazy stuff. And then he was trained by a pro wrestler as well. So he had this whole lineage. So I was like, oh, this is my guy. So Kazushi Sakuraba was my way into MMA. And the more I kind of became obsessed with him and the history of like him and then the Gracies and Brazil and Japan. And then you see how like the pride fighters then go to the UFC. It just kind of became this natural progression until I realized I was like, oh, I'm just as big an MMA fan as a pro wrestling fan now. Probably it's just kind of like it's meshed in now. And the, the wrestling fans are nicer people. Yeah, obviously. Oh, the wrestling. Yeah, of course, the wrestling <laughs> fans. So much nicer. Just read my Twitter. It's bloody wonderful. <laughs> if you wanted, could you go do an MMA match under the WWE contract? Um, in theory, in theory, I could. Theoretically, if, um, if a, a major promotion was to reach out to me, theoretically, say like last year. Oh. Um, if someone reached out to me last year and said, "Would you know? Would you be interested in doing an MMA fight?" We understand, like you have a background, uh, and I got back and said, "Yes, I'd be interested." All I would have to do is maybe take it to WWE, and we discuss how it would work. Um, so maybe in the future, but it's not worked out so far. Sure. Did you just call out James Gallagher? Because that's what it sounded like to me. <laughs> I'm going to take my surname back. You're just going to call say. James from now on. I'm going to Baron Bolo me in an MMA match. What is that? Who's falling for that? Come on. Just back up. Plant your way, sunshine. I was going to say, I think I think Bellator has a European superstar for a European series. They're, they're, they're trying to headline a lot of cards with uh, about your size. So it's the Gallagher versus Gallagher. I, like, when I posted that you were going to be on the show, it is unbelievable how many people thought it was going to be James Gallagher. I think they get you too confused in, in, in this in this world. I get confused with Conor McGregor, and I'm not even bloody Irish. I just have <laughs> tattoos, right? That's the, that is the level of intelligence I'm dealing with with the casual <laughs> fan now. And again, you understand. Like, I, all right, vaguely ginger, pale, accent I don't understand. Not even Irish. And then just, oh, Conor McGregor. That will do. Then they hear Gallagher, and then they're like, oh, I know, James Gallagher. No, I'm not even James Gallagher. Bloody casuals, it's terrible. It is absolutely awful. It's just people who don't pay attention, but they expose themselves, so it's kind of funny in the long run. Oh, that's amazing. And casuals is, is, casual is, is, is a disease, as we know, so uh, <laughs> just all of our thoughts and prayers out to the casuals out there. Right. Please, do not expose yourselves to being a casual. <laughs> Stay away from casual exposure. <laughs> What do you got, Casey? You, you, right. you popping in? Yeah, yeah. First question. It's fine. It's we got so. Oh yes. By the way, we have co fan questions for Jack. I know. I haven't read. I know they exist, but I haven't read them. I like to go in blind, uh, so we can't prepare. <laughs> so, what's our first question, Casey? All right, first question. First question. That's a good starter. Uh, let's go with something light. You from Greb seventy seven on the site. UFC two forty nine. A lot to unpack, but what's your take on the event? Taking place during the global pandemic, Tony versus Justin, Dana's plan going forward, making up for lost ground, a fucking private island? <laughs> question mark, question mark, question mark. So, as I'm sure everyone has heard over the last few days, Dana White has announced he has basically created, he's basically creating like the Mortal Kombat, like Enter the Dragon type scene where he has a private island or fight island, if you would. Uh, I think there's some confusion over this. A lot of people think UFC 249 is taking place here. This is going to be like the international fighters, so like the Jose Aldo's and the Shogun Hua's that maybe can't get to the United States on their visas. Maybe they can go to Fight Island. 
in fights. Uh, UFC 249 is supposedly taking place in Fresno. Uh, but I'll start with you, Jack. When you heard this news that Dan is supposedly making a <laughs> fighter's island to hold these events, are you thinking, like, now we've really reached the – this is this is no longer – I, I can't even put it into words, what, 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 what we're hearing right now. I was so excited. <laughs> <laughs> I was so excited. I, I, most people are like, oh, pinch me, I must be dreaming, this is a nightmare. No, this is fantastic, right? So no matter what, what we're talking about, like the, the pandemic and all sorts of things, we can agree, Fight Island is an awful name, so that has to go. Right. You had so much choice. You could have done a Shang Tsung. You could have done Mortal Kombat reference. You could have been Street Fighter. And we could have been like, Street Fighter's not on an island. And you're like, shut up. It doesn't matter. You could have done so much with it. But you went with Fight Island. Okay. So you've got a bad name. But think about the concept. At the very least, this is the most bizarre thing I've ever... I, I said, I'm a fan of Pride FC. So I'm a bit into a bit of a freak show fight. And as weird as this all is... I'm really, really into the Mortal Kombat idea. I'm really into the, just let's fly them into an island. I don't know how they're being trained on the island. I don't know what the like safety precautions are on the island, but I'm in for it because I don't have to do it, frankly. <laughs> PT, what are your thoughts when you hear of Dana White making a fight island for international fighters? <laughs> I mean, it's it's very MMA, isn't it? Like, it's the most <laughs> MMA thing. We were talking about, like, um, you know, how wild this sport is. And, you know, as far as the push for mainstream approval, this isn't going to do much for that at all. Um, I, I think it's madness, right? I think I think it's crazy. I think when you when you consider every other major sport has just kind of said, oh, well, we can't do this. Um, the fact that MMA is pushing forward, it is not that surprising, let's be honest. It's not the most surprising thing in the world. We've talked about before, Dana White is not the most socially responsible man in the world. This shouldn't be a big <laughs> surprise to anyone. Um, it's insane. Um, I think it's nearly gone past the point of criticism and it's gone into complete disbelief now. Where it's just like, I'm waking up in the morning and all this news has happened. And I'm just like, what, what the fuck is going on here? Like, I don't even know what to say anymore. It's just... Yeah, I guess that's happening. I guess that's happening. Um, it's mental. I, I, I mean, I'm sure all the 30 for 30 crew thought they were going to get a holiday uh, this month. And then they're like, oh, <laughs> shit. Guess we have to go to the pandemic peninsula or whatever we're going to call it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, but I'm sure there's going to be some fantastic documentaries made about this. Pandemic peninsula. <laughs> pandemic like peninsula that is that lin- uh, leading for the name right now, yeah. I've got to say. How about Corona Coast? Oh no, not the Corona oh, Coast. Oh, leave it, leave it. Corona Coast, that's where the chavvy lads just all bum out. You know what I mean? <laughs> that Fight. one was just for yeah. you. I'm gonna be honest. Um, I've got the chav material for just me and you today, mate. <laughs> lovely, lovely, lovely. Uh, I'm gonna I'm like, keep on working on names. I'll come back to them every, every, every so often. All yeah, right. I like to point out, Jose, when when you read the question, you said um, we've no, we've heard for a few days about this fight island. We only heard about it yesterday. Like it was, it came out like, it came out like, so like that's a long. Man, all the days been, blend together at this point. MMA is now. just, it's just. <laughs> We've only it's because you've got so before. much time to allow your imagination to go wild. Like well, someone just I says this bizarre that. thing's happening, and you just left to sit and think about it for a long time. <laughs> what could that possibly mean? Why? I, how? You know, I remember we were on this show when this, when this, all this was initially happening weeks ago when we were like. The, when Dana White kept saying this fight was going to go on and he was going to find a spot, we were joking weeks ago about private islands and fighting on a barge or fighting on a volcano and stuff like that. And now it's actually going to be a fighter's island. I feel like we've been talking about this as a joke for weeks. And now that it's a reality, it's I had no, I, I personally didn't have a reaction to it. I was like, yeah, this makes sense. This makes a lot of sense right now. Do you, do you know what it's like as well? It's like, it's like, MMA can't exist in the mainstream. Like, it just can't. It's, it's tried for so long. And it always had to shine in these gray areas in between the football season, in between the basketball season, if there's a quiet weekend. Like, I mean, this is utter madness, but it might be looked back on as a stroke of genius from a financial point of view later on. I mean, if this, if this knocks it out of park um, and nobody comes away with any illnesses and stuff, I mean, it's going to look like a home run and they, they all they care about is money at the end of the day that's the only way the success of this event unless there's a an outbreak over there and a lot of people get messed up about it which is a possibility in this situation 
But if this goes uh, without without fault, I mean, I, I think the business is going to look back on this as a success. And it's not too surprising that MMA is pressing forward at a time when no other sport will. And to be honest, I, I agree with Dana on one thing, and that is that if this goes well, all the other sports are going to start going, how do we do this? How can we put it on? Because at the end of the day, they're money hungry. They're, they're, it's an organization. They need to they need to pay the bills. They need to keep the, the money coming in. So I do agree with it that much. And I kind of think that I can, I can see where they see the opportunity. I'm sure all you guys can too. Well, you say you said MMA is pressing forward. It's not MMA. It's only the UFC. I think I think Cage yeah. War. I think Cage War is maybe trying to do. Yeah, something Cage War is still holding. Yeah, show. they've got a private location. No Ireland though. So I mean, are, are we as excited? That's the question. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, you mentioned like, a volcano as well as an idea. Now that's starting to. That's, that's what I'm saying, ruminate. man. Yeah, you can't like. How, how like now we're hearing like it's going to be near Costa Rica and everything. Like if this fight island exists. And they have to build a hospital on the island because, like, I don't like what's the logistics? Like, what if someone gets hurt and they have to go to the ICU? Like, it does that exist on Fight Island? Uh, they're gonna have to, uh, there's a lot more questions we're gonna, I, I, I would want answered, but like, but the best say part we is get they don't know where it is, right? Say we get past it and Fight Island still exists after this pandemic, are we gonna have an annual Fight Island event? Like, every year we go back. <laughs> <laughs> anniversary of the first Fight Island show, like Fight Island One, Fight Island Two. Like, there's a lot of questions <laughs> I want answered before we, we hold this event. We're only we're only making Dana more excited with talk like this, Jose. <laughs> He's like, yes, of course, <laughs> it'll be like our WrestleMania. <laughs> um, marketing opportunities. He's yeah. right. He's yeah. right. There's, there's reimbursement from this. Well, I saw, I saw, Dana White will say he thought of it on his own. I saw a good theory. Is like. <laughs> The, the, there is no Fight Island. It's actually the Uf, Uf, UFC Apex Center, and there's just going to be all green screens of, like, tropical like, <laughs> palm trees and beaches. We're like, oh, whatever. So, oh, take, technology. It's going to be like the – what was the – what was it, Rumble on the Rock in Hawaii? They had that epic uh, – when I think of fighting on an island, that's the first thing I think of. That was, like, had Anderson, Yushinokami you know, you Anderson first fight. I think yeah. Jake Shields won the whole tournament. Is Young that Carlos the one Pond. with the – is that the one where the Diaz boys get uh, – like, they're, they're flipping everyone off as they're, like, leaving as well? I was there. That was not, that was for Elite XC. That was doing. Ah. Uh, oh, Lewis. that was the cut stoppage, right? That was uh, the cut stoppage, and he was like, "Oh no, I never get cut." And like, come on. Yeah, yeah. That was the um. Who who did he fight in that? KJ Nunes. KJ Nunes. That's all that. Don't yeah. be scared, homie. That's what that came from. It was his dad from. or something. It was that whole situation when his dad was there and everything. <laughs> That's what the "Don't be scared, homie" line. Yep, yep. But, Those uh, yes, boys. Even, like the the fight island thing. Like, well, I just think it's crazy too. So they said they're gonna fly everyone to a location. And then they all get on a plane and they go to, and but no one knows where the plane is flying. So yeah, I'm like, the fighters don't even know where it is. I, this I, is I, this is a film. This is a film. This is no longer. It doesn't feel like a real thing. You know, I every every they're life. gonna be blindfolded. They're gonna blindfold the pilots. <laughs> they're gonna just go that way. Everyone's gonna be chanting Kumite the yeah. whole time. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. This is a real life blood sport, and I don't know. Like I, I can't say I'm excited, but I'm like curious to see what is gonna happen. But, like, this is the whole thing. Like, I mean, there, there's no news, right? The news media are running out of things to talk about apart from coronavirus, daily updates and stuff. Like, I'm seeing big names talking about this event that isn't even happening this weekend. That's happening next weekend in the U.S. Like, big big talk show hosts. It's it's one. It's in their opening monologues that they're talking about this. Like, yeah. whether we want to believe it or not, like, that is going to add to the, the intrigue. It's going to add to the numbers of people tuning into this. Like, and that's... That's where the opportunity is for the UFC, I guess. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the New York Times, the New York Times broke where UFC 249 is gonna happen. So, like, you see, like, you said it, Pizzi. Like, this is the only thing they're gonna talk about. So, like, the mainstream of the mainstream is gonna, like, they're gonna latch on. Like, Stephen Colbert talked about it in his opening monologue or something like that. So, like, if this is the only thing happening, I know. I'm sure we're going to get questions down the road, but like WrestleMania was the only thing happening this weekend and it was two days. And I know I watched the whole thing because I was going to watch it regardless, but like I was watching, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'm thinking like this, so many people have to be watching this right now. Cause, cause it's oh, the yeah. only sporting event on. I don't watch wrestling ever. And I watched the, the whole weekend, you know, like I, I watched it all. Like, and I mean that, that does say something like, you know, it definitely does. But that was also supposedly like, like it was pre-taped. It's not also not a fist fight where you, well, they create an island, so there's still again, there's more questions we have. Was was yeah. this WrestleMania? Did you have to? Was it a pay per view? Was it just part of the network? Was this one different? 
I just had a network one. I was, it's always network. part of the network. Oh, yeah. it's just not okay. Yeah, but that's a big difference with UFC 249. Seventy dollars. Pull on like seventy dollar pay per view that you can't like we've talked about. You can't group together and pitch in ten dollars each of you. You can't go to a bar to watch it. Uh, I'm sure people are trying to save money during quarantine time because I know a lot of people like they've lost their jobs because they are non essential. So they're collecting uh, either unemployment or no income. So I'd be, I am so curious to see how this would do. Like yes, in theory, there's nothing on TV, so they're gonna watch. They might watch it, but like, will they shell out seventy dollars for this? I don't know. I doubt. I doubt it's gonna do like blow the blow everything out of the water. Anyway, Casey, we got any more questions? <laughs> I'm sure we have a million. I'm sure we're going to keep talking about this. I wonder, I, I, are, are there going to be bathrooms on the island? I just wonder things like that. Like, <laughs> like, you just, like, they just give you a shovel and a coconut? Like, I'll oh, figure it out, you know? <laughs> I don't know. Thing, uh, th- this, week, this week on Eurobash, Noel said that, uh, that he thinks that it will break the pay-per-view record because people are that bored. <laughs> How insane is that? No. I, no. Niall saying... There you go, thing. Noel. There you go, Noel. Have that. No. Everyone on the a side disagrees with you. <laughs> All right. Next question. Next question. Ooh, long one. From Di- Diamon on the site. With WWE still forging ahead with weekly shows and pre-recording events, what control measures has Gallagher seen in place has Gallagher seen in place to limit the spread? Are these things are these things that could be applied to MMA shows, or is the UFC doing a better job as far as we know for a company still forging ahead? The safest choice would obviously be to cancel everything, but it at least brings some comfort to know that everything that can be done to make it safe is being done. Uh so, WWE, as we mentioned, WWE and UFC seem to be two entities that are forging ahead. I think the biggest difference is WWE is pre-recording a lot of stuff. The UFC is forging ahead with pay-per-views and asking for $70, and it's going to be live, and supposedly it's going to be on an island, They not in the apex like the WWE has uh, recorded a lot of at the, uh, the Performance Center. So, Jack... This question is for you. Uh, what control measures has Gallagher seen in place to limit the spread from WWE and so on and so and so forth, and the differences between WWE and UFC? Um, so I can't speak to the differences, obviously, directly sure. between the measures that WWE and UFC are taking. I can tell you from personal experience, uh, kind of just what's happened with the pre-taping that I have done uh, previously, and uh, you understand as well, but like. To put it in context, like why this is so significantly different for people who don't understand why it's different, I'm not cutting weight, I don't have a fight camp, and yeah. I'm not traveling a very significant distance to get here. Most of the people who are doing these pre-tapes live in Florida, and they're in Florida, you know, or they're just staying around the Florida area anyway. I, I live in Florida, like I said before. <laughs> so you've already got a completely different situation for the what the people are doing. So when I've done the pre-tapings before, uh, before we do anything, We check in uh, with medical staff. We give an update about any contact we might have come in with uh, since our last, like, taping or anything. Like, it's very sort of the basic sort of medical form. Um, We will be assessed as well. And then the minimum amount of crew possible is always at every taping and you can imagine like the lengths they've gone to make sure that's possible because you have a multi-person camera crew so they've limited it down to the very very minimum crew that we could actually get away with um and as well honestly i i think like they're doing the absolute best they can from what i've seen there's been a, a clear message led to me and I, I assume the other talent i can't speak for them that if anyone was uncomfortable they could choose, and we saw Roman Reigns at WrestleMania mm-hmm. was uh, concerned about his health as well and the health of his family, which he was very legitimately right to do. And he said, I'm going to sit this one out, and they said, fine. And they've said to anyone else, if you would like to do that, please, this will not negatively affect your career, your standing, anything like this. This is what I've been led to be aware of. Yeah, I mean, I the, the, the things you brought up about not cutting weight, no fight camp, and you and you not only do you not have to travel far, but you know where you're going. Like even if it was in, say, you have to drive to another state, 
you still know where you're going. Like fighters don't know where this supposed island is going to be. I know we need to go ahead. It's it's sorry, yeah. It's also just occurred to me, it's not two teams of people meeting together. That just right. sort of occurred to me now. We're a crew of people who see each other three, four, five days out of the week normally anyway. Right. The the going home to our family is the is usually the, the odd occasion. Now it's the opposite. The people we spend all the time with, you know, it's it's not like MMA where there's a team from Brazil and then there's a yep. team from, you know, uh, Russia meeting and then they meet and then they have to go back to these other countries as well. It's people living in Florida who meet all the time. Yeah, ex exactly. I mean, you also have the ES like so if this is an ESPN Plus pay-per-view, you have the entire ESPN staff, you have the UFC staff. Uh, like backstage, I don't know what, like again, I don't know what the logistics are backstage, but there's a lot of possibility of spreading of virus and like they're gonna have to test the ESPN crew, the UFC crew, all of the fight camps, like you said, like Brazil, Russia. Like if we have someone from Europe flying over, I, I mean, I even know the UFC London card. We had people from the U.S. fly to London, and then Ashley Evans Smith was on the show. She had found out her fight had fallen out when she was already in London and had to fly back. So Pizzi, after hearing what Jack said, I mean, he makes some he makes obviously excellent points about how they are completely different entities. But what do you think about like? how the like wwe and the ufc like you you you're in the MMA world you see w like you hear what jack is saying there really is there are too many differences to really compare the two right yeah and, and even from the way jack is speaking about roman and, and different um you know athletes there it feels like there won't be any kind of big pullback for them making that decision as in rome was like i don't want to do this and they're like yeah that's fine no issue but i get the feeling that you know if 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 some prominent fighters did that with the UFC, that would be something they wouldn't forget all too all too soon, you know. And I feel like there would be some backlash. Like, is it is it fair to say, like Jack, that you know people are comfortable with saying that, and, and it won't have any direct ramifications on their careers if they if they don't feel safe to do so. Um, I like I said, I don't want to speak for WWE as an entity, yeah, of course. An independent contractor. Um, it's it's just been a company wide policy, like they've. Every time actually a development has happened, um, we have updates kind of coming through to us like, hey, here's some documentation from the CWC, uh, C CDC, is it? The, uh, I'm terrible with acronyms, I'm sorry. But then we were getting sort of updates from the, uh, you know, some, from sort of uh, governmental sort of virus things and stuff like that. Whenever sort of a new thing is known, we're getting updated on that. And yeah, it's just been, we've been, we've known the policy. It's like, guys, we understand this is a weird time. We understand you need to think about your family first sometimes if you're coming into contact with people particularly high-risk people we completely understand that and it's just been reiterated at every stage of this even that to be honest is a massive difference from what i've heard from the ufc uh -huh. London fighters you know like uh, the transparency is the biggest difference is what i'm hearing like you we, we like eddie wyland supposedly found out he wasn't fighting cheeto vera when dana white announced the card like no one gave him a heads up that he was no longer fighting he found out the same way we all found out so to me from what i'm hearing from jack is transparency between the ufc yeah. and the wwe to the to their fighters and wrestlers is by far the biggest thing i'm hearing yeah and i mean dalby was the co-main event of ufc london he was on eurobash last week and he said like i didn't know anything like i, I didn't know i i presume that i wasn't one of these relocated fights they mentioned they were relocating the whole card they were only ever trying to relocate Woodley and Edwards, you know, so it's like <clears throat> it, it, it's tough. I, I feel like, you know, based on what Jack said, I think the, the the WWE have handled it a lot better as the the flagship bearer of their sport and their entertainment industry. Yeah, it's, I'm still <laughs> I, I should be surprised that fighters are fi finding out the same way we're finding out, but I'm not. What do you got? What do you got, Casey? You're popping it again? Oh, no, I'm just changing the camera angle. <laughs> <laughs> Just just to be himself. I mean, you know, yeah. Should I just do a camera of me while you talk? I could do that. Oh, yes. I mean, enjoyed it a lot, actually. Beautiful, man. Nice mustache, Casey. But Thank you. it's like Jack is saying, like, the WIB is being so, like, it's is being so transparent. And I should be surprised that, like, you're bringing up Dolby. Like, he, does, he assumes, like you said, he's not one of the relocated fighters, but, like, the main draw, the, one of the main draws in the card. Like, I was going to say, like, if you're fighting in the UK or overseas, Nicholas Dolby is going to be one of the guys fans are going to get in the door to see. Am I, I'm not wrong, right, Pete? Yeah, yeah. Of course. Of course. Like, yeah. like, 
Nicholas Dalby is a draw in the UK. He might not be the biggest draw stateside. One of your biggest draws should probably know if he's fighting or not. Like Eddie Wyland's been in the W like in the UFC for how long? And even he dates back to the WC former title contender. He was supposed to fight Cheeto Vera on the Columbus card, and now he's finding out he's not fighting Cheeto Vera the way we're finding out. So I should be surprised, but I'm not. Yeah, yeah. We anyway. must get, we must get Jack to rate uh, Casey's mustache before the end of the show as well. <laughs> <laughs> I just figured that when I saw Casey flashing up on the screen there, I was like, this is two fantastic mustaches coming together. We need it's to just, get them to rate each other's. It's just two different styles, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's, just, it's, it's the pinnacles meeting. <laughs> <laughs> A fusion of styles. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What do we got next, Casey? Next question. Next question. Do, 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 do. Ah, let's go to this one. Easy one. From Mark Kasbrak. Kasbrak. I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name on Twitter. WrestleMania thoughts. Hashtag the A-side. So, Pizzi, I'll go to you, considering you said you never watched professional wrestling much but you will watch the entire wrestlemania i see a big grin on your face <laughs> but i brought this up so i you were live tweeting this while wrestlemania was going and i was watching and, and my girlfriend was also i was keeping her up to date of your tweets uh you were tweeting this like a fight like yeah. a professional fight of sorts so what did what were your thoughts on wrestlemania well, just like, first of all, they're way stronger than MMA fighters because I've never seen an MMA fighter uh, fight after getting thrown off a balcony a, a few days later. You know what I mean? And look pretty <laughs> goddamn good doing it. But um, I, I tell you, uh, realistically, right, because I don't know the characters, <clears throat> the, the crowd has a real function in WWE, in, in pro wrestling. I know where I stand after each of the guys' entrances, usually. Like, I know who the crowd likes, who's the good guy, who's the bad guy. Um, and I'm responding, and the crowd gives you, it adds to the atmosphere there, what, be, their reactions to the athletes um, is a big part of the viewing experience. And I didn't really, I didn't really acknowledge that until they weren't there at the event. So it was very hard for me to maybe buy into some of the, the athletes without kind of knowing that kind of thing uh, and seeing that reaction that the crowd had to them. But um, I thought the features were absolutely amazing. You know, like uh, that was... I thought that was absolutely brilliant. I'd never seen anything like it, and I had no idea they were going to do it that way. Like, I don't know if, if wrestling fans knew they were going to do something kind of offset for that, where it would be a, a completely different experience, but I thought that was brilliant. And for them to be innovative in, in a time where everything is going crazy, I thought that was really cool. Now, bear in mind, I don't watch a lot of pro wrestling, so if they rub that off someone else, I'm sorry. But I thought that was uh, I thought it was exceptional. The, the John Cena matchup was brilliant. Like, I, I, I thought that was brilliant. I thought it was absolutely amazing I, i've never even seen the other guy he was fighting um but he's he's a star man he, he's unbelievable i was hanging on to every word he said and even john cena completely taking the piss out of himself i thought it was great <laughs> so i'll jack question for you uh is it i'm i think i know the answer but what is it like wrestling in front of nobody um it's not as bizarre as you think honestly really yeah um so the the thing the thing you have to remember is that uh, you're not always like like you said like you're not always familiar with who the who the people are in the ring. So our job sometimes is if you don't know me or you don't know my opponent, part of the job that I'm about to do is informing you who I am and who my opponent is. So in my head, I'm just kind of going like, okay. Just do the thing you normally do. Just, just do the normal job, and it'll, it's, it'll be fine. And after I've, like, I've been doing, I've uh, been doing, I've been wrestling. I've been wrestling <laughs> uh, professionally for about fifteen years now. Wow. So the, the rhythm's just there. The rhythm's just there. It's just trusting that you can kind of do it. So after the first time, it was okay. The, but the very first time, it was like. Um, doing a training match and you guys have never been to a professional wrestling training school I assume so anyone who has knows exactly what that means it was like being a trainee again in front of your coach it was that kind of sort of experience um, I don't know if I could equate it to anything else do you do you know the the, the verbal interactions that uh, the the wrestlers were having on the night was that amplified was that beefed up like in terms of were they talking more than they usually would during the during the actual wrestling going down or is that something i'm just not aware of usually with the crowd there it's usually something you're not aware of so right. like you know when you see people do like like they mime like it's usually the person is actually screaming 
It's just that the the crowd noise is like blurting it out. The thing I actually really like the empty arenas for is you can hear like every time yes, someone's getting yeah. hit. So like those like punches that people think just kind of whiff by, it's like, oh, we're at, yeah, okay, that's a different type of thing now. Well, it made the ladder match that much more brutal because you can hear the uh, ladders like rattle off each other or like John Morrison doing the, the Starship pain off. Like everything, like you mentioned, was amplified. It made it that much more brutal. And you know the thing is as well, like, like it, I'm sure MMA fighters experience this as well, which is, you know, you get hit and you hear the crowd go, ah. So you go, oh, that hurt. But the, the crowd going crazy makes that lizard part of your brain go, ah. And like you become <laughs> crazy for a second. The problem is when you like land on a ladder or you go through a table and there's no crowd reaction, you know, there's no crowd there, it's just clunk. It's ah, oh, ah, oh. you're just laying there in pain. It's so much worse. It genuinely is a 10 times more painful match without the audience there. I feel really bad for those guys. It was fantastic. I actually think the ladder match, apart from the Firefly, was my favorite thing, but they killed each other. Oh, is there that a, was... You were really impressed by that. We wouldn't pick up on like I definitely wouldn't pick up on like. Is there was there any like little subtle thing that happened that night that you know maybe we didn't even most of the watching world wouldn't have even noticed, but you did because you're in the trade like. Um. No, I don't think uh, the only inside like knowledge I have is when an in joke manages to make its way to television. Right. So sure. you know, like there's always there's always some sort of like ha ha. I'm gonna try and see if I can do this. Ha ha ha. Let's see if anyone notices. And then you go like, ah, he did it. No one caught it. He got it through. <laughs> so uh, aside from like little in jokes, which I don't want to spoil because it's sure. kind of like those little private things. Uh, not really. Everyone's, because the crowd's disappeared, a lot of people kind of have to be on their A game because the crowd is that fourth person who's kind of making the match. You have to make up so much more because the crowd isn't there. And it is WrestleMania and... Like you see the promos where everyone's talking about like I the the hype is there like they're more excited this and that when there's no crowd for WrestleMania do you see feel a sense of or WrestleMania Raw SmackDown NXT like with these no crowds do you feel any a different kind of pressure where no one's there so you're not entertaining a live crowd but you like we've talked about there's nothing really happening and it's up to the wrestlers maybe to bring entertainment to the world during a pandemic. Is it a different type of pressure you're feeling in there? Oh, I wasn't feeling it until you said <laughs> it to the wrestlers to bring the world a new type of entertainment. <laughs> I didn't realize we were the saving grace. Sorry, guys, I'll get on that. Um, no, honestly, the, the main thing that I've been thinking about is that um, you make certain concessions uh, when you wrestle in front of a live audience and a camera because you're serving two masters. So you're always you're always sort of serving the audience live and you're always serving the audience at home. Um, with the live audience go away, it means you get to sort of focus. This is something you guys won't notice. It's very inside sort of baseball kind of thing. But this is like, now it has become much more about just the audience at home, which is, I think, why people are finding it so weird because they're, because the, uh, I keep saying rhythm, but like the cadence mm -hmm. of it, the, how the matches happen now, are different because our audience has changed in a weird way because our audience has gone from a live person to this camera here. Sure. Thanks, anonymous dude. One, two, three. On our <laughs> yeah. screen there. Um, it, I was gonna. I, I wanted to just ask you one thing, Jack. Like because of all this this uh, practical training you've had, like the the catch wrestling, um, grappling, etc. Does that give you like an extra layer of respect in comparison to some people? Like, is that commonplace in the in in pro wrestling or is this like an extra string to your bow if you know what i mean like does this give you a bit more of a nod like when they're like well this guy's really doing it you know um it, it kind of varies from person to person i'm not i'm definitely not unique in the world of professional wrestling obviously like brock lesnar is a person who you might who? have heard of it. i know <laughs> <laughs> um so obviously there's people like that we have uh matt riddle is currently mm -hmm. in nxt obviously um but there's so many guys who randomly are like state uh, amateur wrestling champions or they get scouted because of um, being involved in another sport um the thing that's helped with me is like i'm i'm a cruiserweight which you know it's for the mma fans it's like being a ufc flyweight 
you're just constantly battling everyone's indifference despite being technically superior and faster to everyone. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. That's what I think of you, Jack. Go ahead. Right? Thank yes. you, mate. I, I, knew, I knew we'd be friends at the start of this. I knew, I knew it would work out. So the, the thing that has helped me is being a smaller guy, my ear, like the reason I'm wearing these and not like, uh, like Fuds is my ears are really chewed up from years of grappling. So anyone who kind of understands like what that means we go, all right, you are, you're short, which for some reason means I'm not tough. You're short. And then they go, oh, his ears are a bit messed up. Oh, he's, <laughs> his te- he's got a cut down his lip. Oh, he's got a, uh, okay, okay. It gives, it, it adds an le- air of legitimacy to an otherwise farcical human being. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> Have you what? ever rolled with any of the guys? Pardon? Have you ever had a quick roll with any of the guys? Like, do you ever I do have... that? I've had a play about, but like the the only time I've ever done it is the canvas is so slippery. You'd have to wear, uh, you really do have to wear wrestling shoes to sort of do it, and it's not very conducive for if you're ever playing guard because your legs get entangled mm. so quickly. So if you're some, yeah. yeah, so if anyone likes to hop on leg locks, you can't pull your feet out, and it just becomes a mess, and people. Just that's roll all yeah. over the place. Well, that's PT's bread and butter right there, leg locks. That's why I've never gone to pro wrestling, lads. The contracts were there. I just couldn't make it. <laughs> oh, mate, I've got, I've got a fair decent 50-50 guard. I'll give it a bash with you. Uh, I don't even have a guard. I'm just jumping on legs and hoping for the best. <laughs> hey, so, if I don't get it, I'm fucked. <laughs> <laughs> PT, I, I, someone told me you're pretty flexible. Oh, yeah, yeah. Did you hear that, yeah? Yeah. Do you want me to ju- do you want me to show you? Well, Do we, I can we, probably we show have you? a new guest. We have a guest. <laughs> we have a new guest. He has to see. Uh, Bear Jack. Jeans, no, Congrats. no stretching. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. Jesus! Come on, Jack. That's a breath. <laughs> That's a yeah. You've got a rubber guard there, mate. You should do Come some on. Eddie Bravo stuff. What happened? Oh. I was going to say, you should do some Eddie Bravo rubber guard stuff for me. I actually invented rubber guard, and me and Eddie Bravo have a lawsuit pending, and I just can't talk about it any more than that. <laughs> just look into it, man. Just look into it. <laughs> you just yeah. saw, Jack, because PT did that at USC 246 Media Day. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why did you do that at the Media Day? What, what was we the thing that made line. you go, oh, this will work? Just Here, let the fighters know, you know what I mean? Let me me set the scene. We're waiting. He just interviewed Anthony Pettis, and I just interviewed uh, Diego Fajeda, and we're just talking (laughs) while we're waiting in line to interview these fighters. And PC just comes up to me and goes, "Did you know I'm the most flexible person in this room?" (laughs) I have a bunch of professional fighters and black belts waiting to be interviewed, and I go, "What are you talking about, man?" And he goes, "Watch this." (laughs) In the middle of media day. And just lays on the floor and does that. So that is the t- that is what P.T. Carroll does during media days. And Peta said nothing. Sat there shaking. <laughs> I think if he says nothing, he sat there shaking. He said enough, mate. He said enough. You're on the bloody floor with the leg behind you. <laughs> Why is this Irish man doing this? <laughs> how, how long in the room were you before you decided, like, oh, yeah, I'm the most flexible person. Uh, hours. <laughs> Just took a quick look around the room and was like, I know, I know what's happening here. I was just picking the right moment. I didn't want to intimidate them before I interviewed them. because that He must be the most interested person at an open workout. He just likes waiting for the high kick going, oh, I've got him beat. Oh, I've got him beat, yeah. <laughs> look, I'm just saying, if he needs to get me over the pandemic peninsula, I am ready. I, am ready. <laughs> I can do this any time of the day. <laughs> Well, going back to the uh, the smaller fighters, PT, uh, <laughs> Jack also, he wrestles on, do you know what 205 Live is, PT? No. So 205 Live is, like, for the, the smaller guys in WIB, and two, so they have to weigh, a, a, it was a maximum 205 pounds, right, Jack? Yeah. That's, so John Jones's weight class is considered small in what the WWE. That is mental. I mean, like, you must have to cut an awful lot of weight then, Jack, to get under that limit. Oh yeah, I chopped my knees off a couple of years ago. That helped. <laughs> what what is the like the what is the the size range then in that division must be absolutely mental. It must be like a, a eighty pound differential. Um. So the thing is, that the wrestlers don't get ver- professional wrestlers don't get very very small. Is the other thing. So we it doesn't go like all the way down to like one hundred and twenty five pound guys. You know, right. the smallest person in probably in WWE is like one hundred and sixty pounds. Right. You know, as an active wrestler. So that's still bigger than Tony and Khabib on the weigh-in day. Um, which really makes you think as well when you think about like actual size differences, like, you know, like how big guys are the draws. 
like that how that has changed in terms of the average size of people now the average person is like the person everyone wants to watch no one watches heavyweights as much sure. mm. So it's like kind of like Connor, rugby players as well, isn't it? Like when rugby players, you, when you're looking at them in a crowd, you're like, oh, they're all the same size as me. And then you get up close, you're like, oh, holy shit, okay. Yeah, I'm not doing yeah, this. It, it was meeting Big Show for the first time that actually sort of uh, hit it home because it, it, dude, meeting like at TV, uh, him being on TV does not really convey the size of the man. You know, like I've <laughs> met big people, I've met six foot, you know, I've met all these bodybuilder types. But when you're sort of shaking a man's hand and his hand sort of just, covers yours and you go oh, i don't have a hand anymore so you, <laughs> then you know you understand like oh there's there is different levels to size i guess now that is imagine mint. if conor mcgregor does jump over w like people oh every time he fights it kind of becomes a story like imagine if him inside the wb ring he would look so small compared to like the bigger wrestlers because he's, he's what peachy like five seven for, he's five eight, five nine. I'd say, yeah. Five, eight, he, five, he's nine. Around, he, he is like legitimately around my height and around my weight. So just look like I know we did the I look like Conor McGregor joke before. But look <laughs> at me stood next to people, and that will give you a good indication as to probably how he'd look. Yeah, I think the thing about Conor um, when you meet him is the width of him. That's pretty intimidating. Yeah, like, I mean he's super list. wide. He's, he's, he's all lats, isn't he? As yeah, well. his, his chest. He's like a shaved wolf or some shit. I don't know. <laughs> like I mean, he is huge. His his back and his chest are just huge. Like he's like an upside down Christmas tree. I can always, always ever since uh, he was young, he always had a huge frame, like a big huge frame, like a shaved wolf, as I said. He has invisible lat syndrome, where his arms just kind of hang off to the side like that. He's carrying carpets. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Bellhop syndrome. I've heard that too. Uh, but P- Casey, any more questions? MMA related or non? All right. Let me take a look. Do, do, do. All right. Thank you for the question, Mark. I'm <clears throat> sorry if I butchered your last name. <laughs> All right. Here's some, um, I guess, yeah, ah, fun stuff. Here we go. From Sean Denny at Denny Rants, longtime commenter. Hashtag the A-side. Can you see the UFC having any issues holding events under CSAC in the future due to bypassing them to hold a show on a reservation? So, yes, gentlemen, if you haven't heard, uh, the California State Athletic Commission is not going to be involved in UFC 249 in Fresno in California. So what Sean is asking is could there be any ramifications down the line if the UFC is basically holding unsanctioned fights in California? Will that play any factor into their relationship with Cal- the California State Athletic Commission. Pete, so I'll start with you. Uh, what do you make of this whole unsanctioned fights the UFC is holding? What, what? Like, is there going to be medical mercenaries drafted in for this? Like, how does this work? <laughs> That's honestly- exactly. Like, we don't know what's going to, like, 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 <laughs> hospitals. Like, is there going to, what doctors are going to be on the scene? Like, the judges? Like, exactly. We don't know. Um... I, I think, yeah, I think with all of these kind of things, it, it turns into an ego battle. I think the whole reason this is happening is Dana White's ego. And I think the guy from the California State Elect Commission also has an ego. And these will go ramming each other now because this is going ahead. And uh, I don't know if there will be problems because at the end of the day, the the, the UFC is a, is a cash cow for all of these athletic commissions. Like, I mean... Um, I can remember all this big talk from Las Vegas on Conor McGregor and then, oh, it might not fight there again. Suddenly everything, everyone changed their tune very, very quickly. So, yeah, I can imagine there will be a bit of tension. Uh, but at the end of the day, they need to come together to make money. And, and you know, that, that's what it will be at the end of the day. I don't see any long term issues outside of a bit of loggerheads until the next event. You know, come here. Yeah, do I don't splits. know. Uh, but we need to we need to set up some type of platform. I don't know myself, but we will try live next week. <laughs> Going back to the question, I mean, California and UFC's relationship is unique. Where John Jones is supposed to fight in Las Vegas is Alexander Gustafson, and then all of a sudden that falls out, and where, who takes him in is the California State Athletic Commission. Like, they allow him to fight in Englewood on a few days' notice. So, Jack, I don't know if you have any thoughts on the matter of athletic commissions and such. I know super exciting stuff on the A-side, but, uh, (laughs) yeah, I think we all have – there's too many questions that we need to answer before I could even possibly add another. Um, Yeah, I I very rarely have to deal with athletic commissions either, (laughs) but don't worry. It's not disinteresting. We're all interested. It's why we're here. Don't put yourself (laughs) down like that. You're doing well. (laughs) Um, but no, I, I, it, as you said, if they've already got like a pleasant relationship with them uh, regarding like the John Jones situation, uh, well, 
the, the last, the John Jones situation before the other John Jones situation that we're currently going, you know, you yeah. know, John, oh, John, oh, John, what are you doing? <laughs> um, but if you've already got a good situation with them, like, I, I don't know, probably, it'll probably be fine. I'm sure money talks in the long term for them. I'm sure Dana White's going to do the uh, adult thing and he'll, Dana White does this thing where when he when you kind of rub him the wrong way, he just doesn't talk to you anymore. Like he'll just <laughs> walk by you in the hallway. Like it's like I bet him and Andy Foster were, were like on handshake terms, and now they'll just walk past each other. So that's <laughs> I think that's the extent of what we'll get. Casey, you got any thoughts on the matter? You live in California, Casey. You've covered a million nights <clears throat> in California. Inglewood, um, Inglewood, no good. Um, it's not a good thing. It's not. It's not. Not a, a good it's, thing. And I think uh, I think they've already said these will be con- these will be considered. Um, uh, what's that? Un- yeah, unsanctioned. So unsanctioned. like, it's, it's 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 unclear if these are even going to going to be like official fights. So is this going to be more of a exhibition because it's going to be no 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 governing body. So um, a lot so of questions. So would this not go on people's records? That's what I was just thinking. Yeah, like I mean, That's if they win the toilet, people, it doesn't it, happen. It, like going possibly. through the, the comment section, so that is by far the most pre- like like common question we've gotten in the in the comment section. It goes, will these fights eat? like if like if if this if Habib was on this card say and like he didn't go to Russia because this again, Pizza you retweeted this but to put another kind of nail in that coffin this is only taking a three hour drive away from where Habib trains so if he had stayed in California you could have just driven there. Um, okay, now that's mental. If Habib, that's funny. someone that's funny. comments <laughs> question, like if, if Habib had stayed on this card and Tony had beat him would he still be mm. undefeated technically if this doesn't go on his record so. I don't know. I truly don't know. I'm sure we'll have more answers. I'm sure we'll have more questions uh, than answers as as the closer we get. Can I ask Jack just two very quick questions? Uh, it's very important to me because he's from Manchester. He needs to answer these questions. Uh, Oasis or Stone Roses, Jack, please, first of all. Oh, um, Stone Roses. Good man. Tell yeah. us why. Um, so that one album, everyone will always like say the second album. Oh, enjoyed it. Listen to that second album. It's got like a couple good songs. Be honest with yourself here. Breaking it down. That first album is just perfect. And like, like you know, you know why it's Stone Roses, not Oasis. You know why? Because if there's not one, there's not the other. It's you know, it's like the cover band, isn't it? I love Noel Gallagher and Liam, but like, let's be honest. When one guy walks on stage, you go, John Lennon, Ian Brown, John Lennon, Ian Brown. John- oh, it's Liam. It's Liam. It's Liam. <laughs> Yeah, that's a great answer, Jack. Second one, United or City? Uh, so, this one will surprise you. I'm the only Englishman who doesn't really follow football. Oh, interesting. Even more interesting. But my uh, family, even though I don't follow football, is City. And has always been City, even before they were good. I grew up in City, we were a rubbish football team. <laughs> if I was growing up in City, we were a good football team, maybe I would have gotten into it. But they were rubbish growing up. That's mad. I actually went to see the Stone Roses in City's home ground, which is uh, an interesting oh, way to try that up. Yeah, unbelievable. But uh, yeah, I needed to ask you that. I only thought about while you were, while you were there. I was like, I better say this before I forget. Sorry, all <laughs> sports fans. I think Al, Al, AK Leon or say when he, he posted in the in our in our private channel, goes, this chat has gone very European. <laughs> Down straight. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> well, we actually, I... I interviewed Darren Till uh, before his Tyron Woodley fight, and I asked him that man, uh, city or like Manchester City, Manchester United. And he goes, "I don't even watch football, man." So you're not <laughs> alone. Not you, you... Now. Oh, good. There you go. So they gave him a free jersey, and he's just—he's a football fan now. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so us in America, I, we assume everyone just loves you know football in the UK and Ireland. What, do you guys just? But over there, do you assume like we're all watching like? Like um, American football every weekend, like we're all about the Super Bowl. Is that the, the assumption? Yes. Yeah. Based on the people I hang around, you are. <laughs> yeah, even you guys. Even you guys are watching football at the last event I was with you guys. What yeah, are you talking about? Everyone does casually in this. Cause that's the thing. Everyone counts it. Yeah. It's like I'm not really watching football. I'm just doing this app that requires me knowing the name of every single player and every single team and making the stats work in my favor. And I only sort of follow the games for all the players. Oh, my God. You guys all watch football. Don't try and get around it. 
I think Casey thinks if he doesn't paint himself the color of his home team, he's not watching. <laughs> <laughs> You're all in or nothing. No half measures. You know, you got to. I'm not a big fan. <laughs> I'm not a big fan. My body is just painted. Yeah. <laughs> Check out this tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to do that, though. I'm jealous of uh, how long their sports are. Do you know what I mean, Jack? Like, I mean, we have little, we kind of have shorter sports, whereas yeah. they feel like, I mean, the amount of drinking that can be done <laughs> during an American sport is, is pretty biblical. I've contemplated getting into cricket for the sole reason that I needed a good excuse to just sit around and drink with my wife more. So, yeah, I, I completely understand. I have no interest in cricket, but I, I saw the same thing, like, a lot of time wasted just sat around drinking in that game. That sounds pretty Serious good. Serious session. Serious session. And I mean, who cares? It's cricket. Let's just get drunk. You know what I mean? I think we should get into what? cricket, Jack. <laughs> Me and you together. All right. Cr- start cr- the, cr- cricket talk start with Jack and Pete. Cr- cricket talk. We're going to Cricket Island where we fly in all the greatest <laughs> cricket players. And our, our medical mercenaries, of course, in case someone gets a splinter. But look at our wicket-shaped mountains. Thank you. <laughs> You know, I, I I do watch I do like watching cricket highlights of when the guys they swing and they and the but the ball just winds up hitting him right in the nuts. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny every time. Like there's, I mean, that's why I watch MMA too for the nut shots. But I also watch cricket for the guys well, getting I've, clobbered. I've tried guy. to watch cricket. I tried to watch cricket with someone who follows cricket religiously twice, and he was saying there's still there's two different types of cricket. Like oh, yeah. one game, of, oh, yeah. one specific type of cricket that. could last like a week. And the other oh, yeah. one lasts like a couple hours. It's test, isn't it? Is that what it's called? Is that the difference? Just test cricket and twenty twenty? Is it, Jack? Um, <laughs> we need to get into it. We haven't got into it. Yeah, we it. need to get into it. I, I saw I saw a thing on the fast version of cricket that's mostly played in India, from what I understand. Yeah. It's a better I think that's TV the biggest sport, game yeah. in India right now. Yeah, oh, that sounds amazing. Yeah. So one of the comments actually said cricket is better than MMA. <laughs> <laughs> Tune into our new show next we, we week. We don't know yet. We don't know. We can't say definitively. You're not, not wrong. Watched enough. You're not wrong. <laughs> Cricket right. talk. More questions, Casey. Thank you, Sean, for the week. Thank you, Sean Denny. Uh, you know what? This is a question I feel we need to answer. So, um, for us media members, should the media boycott UFC 249 from. Sh- Simon Maguire. Interesting question. Pizzi, if you could cover a fight on Fight Island or the one at in Fresno, California, would you? Well, I am going to be covering it. Like, I mean, I don't... Th- like, a lot of people are are, are, are are coming in heavy on the MMA media for us criticizing the fact that this is going forward at all. Um, and I've seen this a lot, even from fighters. Like, I mean, who is your manager if you don't understand what the MMA media is? Like, I mean, that's... Seriously, like, if your manager hasn't explained this to you at this stage... You need to really consider who you're with. Our job is to discuss the news, the developments, and to keep people informed. So if you're going to talk about this absolute freak of nature event happening on an island and think we're just going to stop doing our job for today, you are mental. You have no idea what our job is. We're, no, we shouldn't We shouldn't boycott this. We need to cover it. It's, it's the biggest news in all of sports. Uh, whether we agree or disagree with it is not important. Our job is to cover the developments of the sport and fighters should know this. Media members should know this. And um, and I'm not, so I know Simon McGuire is only asking us this as a, a conversational topic. He's he's a, a media member himself. But uh, yeah, it's just what this highlighting to me more than anything. All this MMA media, blah blah blah, is people don't have a fucking clue what we're meant to be doing. Um, of course we're going to cover it. It's it's the biggest story in the sport this year. Maybe it could be of the last decade, depending on what happens. Yeah, there's no possible way we would. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, our I, job is to provide the news for the viewers. Yes. Yeah. Um, Go ahead, Casey. Yeah, like so. I live about. I'm. Um, Tachi Palace is about actually halfway in between. Uh, it's about three hour drive from here too. And um, yeah, um, if the UFC credentials us to cover the event, me and Esther, uh, our photographer, we do plan on going and driving up there. And of course, going because like, we're news. We want to cover. What the what you see safety precautions? I want to talk to the doctors. I want to talk to the people setting up the cage. I want to see if the testing is actually done. I want to see who's doing the testing. That's what we're there for. And myself, I will of course be wearing a mask, gloves. Um, Esther, if she's allowed to do cage side photography, we've already talked about it. She'll be wearing a mask, wearing goggles because of the sweat and everything. It means it's 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 not it's not the smartest thing to do, 
but it's nope. our, it's what we do. It's our jobs, and um, I mean that's that's what we kind of signed up for. And we're taking every safety precaution that we can take. So, and, and this is no different from anyone that has to work at a grocery store, or delivery driver. Mm. They're taking the same right. exact risk. So, um, now one thing I wasn't sure of is if we're even going to be allowed to by the state. I'm sorry, by the state because of whole. Is this considered an essential job? But I think media mm. is considered essential right now because of news crews and like they cover. They're still covering things. So, I'm pretty. I'm pretty confident we'll be allowed to go by uh, the state's regulations. But uh, no, yeah. Even though um, my personal feelings, uh, I'm not in favor of 249 happening. But as a media member and journalist, yes, we will be covering it. I think that's what the people are finding the hardest to re- to resolve, right? Is the fact that you don't agree with the event going ahead, but you're going to be covering it. I, I don't like. I, I feel like they feel like they can't coexist in any way, shape, or form. You know, I think that's where people are seeing the problem, but they, they just don't understand what the job is, I guess. Uh, it's actually, that's one of the triggers for my rage during this isolation, to be honest. So keep on hitting me with the MMA media bullshit. So I'm going, ah, every morning. It's like all of these questions that we, we keep saying, like there's so many questions we need answers to, and like we can go find these questions. We can go find the answers if we go, and we can provide guys like like Jack, who is in quarantine and is clearly a big MMA fan. I'm sure he has questions too. How do you think we're gonna get the answers? Is to go and find them. I'm uh, sure, also, like also, Jack. I'm sorry to interrupt, but isn't it isn't it strange to ask the media to boycott this under ethical grounds? Like, isn't it isn't it the consumer who's the one who should make the ethical judgment on the product? Well, see, yes. Jack, yeah. here's where I say this every week. Here's the problem with that. You're making sense. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, I'm new here. I do, no, but I, I will say that about like all of you, like all of the WWE people we've interacted with, they have a much better understanding of what the media is. I, I really feel that. Like, I mean, you guys seem to use every opportunity you just have in front of a camera so well. You understand what's going on. You understand that these people want to get a story from the situation you always give them something like even at the start of the show you gave us some fantastic stories about your mma career like you understand the the situation i feel like there's so many fighters we go to and they're like why aren't you pulling a magical story from me you know what i mean it's like it, it's just um i don't know I, i'm pretty angry though at the moment so we should probably uh move on to something else <laughs> uh any other questions casey from uh, the fans any good one to do, do, do that was a good one though that yeah. was, that was it i felt i felt it needed to be answered um it did you know what i think we're, we're we got all the good ones done that's um well so we are out of questions uh jack it was phenomenal to have you on we'd love to have you on in the future i think our audience just going through the youtube comments are pretty blown away not just about your mma experience but how far back your MMA knowledge goes. So, but as always, all of our guests on the show get to plug, talk, say whatever they want. So the floor is yours. I think you've done a promo once or twice in your <laughs> life. So the floor is yours. Oh no, yeah, I get to talk about myself, <laughs> my favorite thing. Um, yeah, if you if you like hearing me rambling, you like sarcastic jokes, please follow me on Twitter at, at gentleman jack g. I'm sure it's yeah, it's it's here. It's yeah, it'll be here. Yeah. There we go. There oh, go. it says superstar. That's wonderful. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's up, am, it should be up now. <laughs> I'm yeah. also on Instagram at Mr. Gentleman Jack. You can catch me every single week on 205 Live. If you do not have the WWE Network, it is every week on Hulu as well. So if you have Hulu, you can watch 205 Live there. Uh, otherwise, watch Raw, Raw watch SmackDown, uh, like, subscribe, things. I don't know. Buy my merchandise. Actually, buy my merchandise. Just do that. <laughs> Just buy my merchandise. You don't have to watch the wrestling. I'm definitely buying merchandise. <laughs> before we let you go, Jack, because I don't know if we'll talk to you before the fight starts, who do you like between Justin Gaethje and Tony Ferguson? So, it's a really... Right, so one thing. I don't like making predictions. Sure. Because obviously I'm a, everyone says I don't like making predictions, but I have a good reason why I don't like making predictions. One of the very few times I thought, you know what, I don't think people are giving this guy enough credit. I said, you know what, I think Ben Askren's going to win this fight. 
I tweeted it. I said, my wife's my, my wife's picking Jorge Masvidal, but I think Ben Askren's got this. I don't think people are giving him enough credit. You know, like, I don't think they understood what he was like in, like, 1FC. And then I was like, ugh. Oh. <laughs> I'm never making a public prediction again. So that is the reason I don't like making picks. But I will say it's it's a really weird thing to kind of pick it now because, like we said before, there's training camps kind of involved. And yeah. you, no matter who wins, there's always going to be the question of was but were both of the guys at their best? You know, were they truly at their best? Because you could say Tony's already been preparing for Khabib, but that means he's been preparing for Khabib, so he doesn't have these like specific game plan for Justin that he can train with his training partners potentially and then obviously Justin's a madman so he'll just come in and do whatever I I think I I would just say I think however the first round plays out is how the fight will just continue because Justin Gaethje since like coming back it's all been first round first round first round but if you really look at like Ferguson, even the doctor stoppages, it's like second round, third round, fourth. But he has a couple first round like submissions when people get too eager. I think he's got a couple first round knockouts. But like a lot of the stoppages come in three, three and four, two, three and four. Um, so I think if Gaethje, like the new Gaethje, the one that sticks back, isn't afraid to get like stuck in, but he's just looking for the overhand and welling in those leg kicks is kind of the, the thing to mask it. If he can kind of play a distance game with Tony well, I think he can keep that up for a whole game, for a whole five rounds potentially and win, or catch him and win. But if he gets drawn into the brawl and it's just in Gaethje, so he's going to get hit. <laughs> ah, you know, like there's a very good chance that this will just devolve into a brawl, and I think that favors Tony Ferguson way more. So that's my non-answer answer. No, well, it makes sense. So- it's I, you. What the the non prediction you've given was far more intelligent than the predictions of oh, Gaethje is going to get slept <laughs> that we see in the comment section. So thank you for an actual answer. Uh, you mentioned it yourself. Like you, I don't know if you've seen that that meme someone made of every single opponent that Tony Ferguson has beaten on this long play. run. Yeah. Their face is just carved up like he like Anthony Pettis had the towel thrown in. Like Donald Cerrone, his eye blew up. So people don't even look the same. After the the thing is, as well, Ferguson has more wins than Gaethje has fights. Like Ferguson is on like twenty-five wins, and Gaethje is on thirty, like twenty. Sorry, twenty-five wins, and Gaethje is on twenty-three fights, I think. And like I think that. between the there's seven decisions, at most. That's I wish this fight was happening with full camps. Like, also to put it in perspective, Jack, I don't know if you know, but the last time Tony Ferguson lost. Ronda Rousey wasn't even in the UFC. Women weren't allowed to fight before the last time, uh, in the UFC the last time uh, Tony Ferguson fought. But we've gone a little over time. Uh, thank you so much, Jack. We'd love to have you on in the future. Uh, we're going to have a lot more shows down the road, more quarantine time. I'm sure we're going to have a lot more conversations uh, to fill time to, for our lovely audiences. But for Pizzi, that's everyone's favorite, mm-hmm. mustachioed hipster. I don't Woo! know where you is. My screen. Casey. And, of course, WWE and 205 Live superstar Jack Gallagher. Oh, and PC, of course, has to carry his crystals. Um, I'm Jose. This is going to be up on Google, uh, Apple, Google, Stitcher, Spotify, everything. Uh, but we'll see you on Friday. We're out. Mwah.